Welcome to Writers Are the Best Weirdos, the podcast starring me, Julia Roberts. I am a creativity coach, speaker, writer, and a weirdo. <laughs> Aren't you? We're going to answer a lot of questions about pubbing and promoting and marketing your books, so stay tuned. We're here with Chrissy Woj. We're going to talk about podcasting. It's going to be great because Chrissy's, Chrissy's great. Let me tell you a little bit about her and then we'll welcome her to the podcast. Okay, so Chrissy Woj is a storyteller, performer, and newly minted mom. She writes for her longtime blog, Quirky Chrissy, co-hosts a Disney movies podcast, Mouse Ears at a Movie, and is currently working on her first novel. She lives in the suburbs of Chicago with her husband, her baby, and dog. When she's not momming or messing around on the internet, she enjoys playing pretend with her improv team, Shade Tree, and eating really fancy cheese. I am happy to welcome Chrissy to the show. And um, welcome. Thank you for having me. I, absolutely. Uh, here's what I, well, here's what I love about you. If ever I'm at an event with you, there's like 59 people gathered around. <laughs> and it's just a magnetism that is undeniable. So it's the pink uh, hair. It's totally the pink hair. A little bit that they recognize you from two years ago or last time they saw you a little bit. I mean, I have that same Thing with Julia Roberts people remember me because of that name you know that's my pink hair so well, I remember is... you because of your speaking session that just was awesome thank you very much I love hearing that you could say it again but we really don't have time <laughs> <laughs> so Chrissy Mouse Ears in a Movie is your podcast has that been going on a long time um we started it so it's we have one season but we started it in 2019 was the the planning mm -hmm. stage and then okay. we hit the pandemic and that happened and we both yep. went a little little all off the deep end and uh it took us about a year and a half to get it off the ground and then mm. we've we we did our first season and then I got pregnant <laughs> and so now we're bringing season 2 right back uh this uh this coming month next march i believe end of february oh. march something like that i'm in my first season and i'm pretty sure it'll just go annually from now on but you never know right <laughs> things, things, things get things get wild like in in between the time that we started and we picked out our name and picked all of our social media we actually it took us so long to get started that somebody took our name oh wow your your podcast name yeah, so we 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 changed. We were originally going to be fairy pod mothers, and oh, um, yes, if someone thought of that, I could see why they did. And it. by yeah. the time we were ready to launch, it was like there's already a fairy pod mothers podcast that's live and active right now. So let's change this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody's going to steal my name. Writers are the best weirdos. I'm pretty sure that's. <laughs> I mean, it's a great name. Thank you. Um, it's kind of one of my core beliefs. <laughs> anyway, so so you've been podcasting, you're in your second season, and mm -hmm. how did you pick your topic? Why that topic? So uh, my podcast partner, Sarah, reached out to me and she said, I want to do a Disney movie podcast, and you're the person I want to do it with. And I was like, I'm in. This is amazing. I love Disney movies. She loves, we are both very big Disney files in general. I'm mm -hmm. a Disney, I'm a Disney parks addict. I'm a pass holder. I live in Chicago and fly down there two to three times a year, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so watching Disney movies and just which one do you fly life, to? land or world world world. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a Florida girl. Yeah. And it's bigger by a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So I, I cut you off. What were you saying? Oh no. Uh, so yeah. Watching Disney movies and you know, pretending to ignore real life for a while just sounded like a great idea. <laughs> well, here's what I think is um like unique or interesting. Most of us think that we have to do all our social media and all of our just touches with our readers based on a book we happen to be writing. Like we all think that the subject matter has to be um, whatever we're writing about. We have to suddenly become historical people if we're doing historical fiction or we have to suddenly become romancy if we're writing romances but you're building your audience based on something you just love I absolutely and who I, and building it based on who I am and I am a multifaceted person like we all are and mm -hmm. so many times on social media all you see is a person in a niche category 
talking about a niche thing. And it's just that one tiny part of who they are. And I never want to be just that. So, and I've, I've in on Instagram alone, I've dabbled. I've been in several niche communities. I was in the yoga community for a very long time. Then I was in the Disney bounding community, which is dressing up in Disney costumes, but in everyday clothes. And what I've learned is that I'd rather just post everything and show who I am across the board. And so Mm -hmm. I have a niche podcast and then I have a blog that talks about everything. And then I'm writing novels that are completely different. Mm -hmm. Well, what I see this as, and tell me where I'm wrong, but basically you're, you're building a fellowship that is based on who you are, not what you just happen to have written. Yes. I, if you wrote something, everybody on the Disney podcast would be interested because they've been listening to you and they like you. I hope so. That's, yeah, that's well, my I hope. Mean, that's my plan. Yeah. But I mean, I think, mm, I think I've been in this trap a little while where you want to be helpful um, on a subject matter, but you were not necessarily bringing people over to your voice or to who you are because you're in this one, you're in this one silo, but Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, so that's what I really find really interesting is this idea or the audacity to just be yourself and just be whole and large and messy, but all, all in. Yeah. So that's, that's working for you. It, it does. And I mean, like you, like you said, when I'm at an event, people kind of just come to me and they recognize me and they're like, Hey, what's got, what's up? What's going on? And uh-huh, uh-huh. that's, 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 an, yeah. that's another thing that's really important to me is instead of thinking of it as building followers, I'm just building a community and hopefully, you know, everyone who follows me thinks that they're my friend or is my, that not thinks that like, is my friend, right? Like is <laughs> okay. my friend because I <laughs> sure as heck, the quiet part out loud. <laughs> I sure as heck think that everyone I talk to on the internet is my friend. I know I'm simple that way too. I'm not even simplistic. I think it's more the right word. I just feel like, oh yeah, you're my pal. You know, <laughs> like when when I had a baby, I was like, you guys are all aunties and uncles. Like, hi, mm-hmm. welcome to my life. Like, you're mm-hmm. on the internet with me. You're my baby's aunties and uncles. Well, I mean, with the pot, with the um, pandemonium. What's the word? Pandemic, such as it was. The internet was all we had, you know what I mean? It's true. Were, you know, those were our pals, the people who were on Zoom or in your Facebook group or whatever, you know, that was really who we got. It mm-hmm. was. Yeah. Can, imagine then the days before internet, well, or some people were, I remember a time when people were making friendships on the internet, like they'd never met them in person. I just thought, is that safe? You know, <laughs> is that creepy? And the, now it feels so normal. I was mm. like 12 the first time I met someone off the internet it was in like the seventh or eighth grade it was like crazy (laughs) I was in my 50s no I'm only I'm exaggerating (laughs) and I still have friends who are like close friends who I've never met in person Mm -hmm. but we have have such a connection I have clients I mean we're obviously intimate connection and never met in person Mm mm-hmm Always would like to, if they're going to be around or if I'm going to be in the Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So what has podcasting been like for you? How much time does it take? Is it worth doing? Why, why are, why is anybody podcasting now? Podcasting is great. Podcasting is awesome. Because you love to talk or because it speaks to who you are or what's, why choose it? Well, one, I love to talk. (laughs) That is guilty. Uh Facts. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but also I love that you can, you can pick something that is a niche topic and you can just totally geek out on it and your audience will find it. Like Mm -hmm. if it's, it, it, you know, you're not going to get somebody on a Disney movies podcast that wants to come over here and throw shade on you because you're not talking about horror movies, which I also love, but that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So your little, your little friend group will find you. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and that, that neat, like you can really geek out. So we talk about, like, we do some research about the movies. We, we watch the movie, we write, we take notes. Sometimes we'll watch the movie a couple times. Cause we're like, damn, that was weird. Um, which is crazy to think with a Disney movie, but it's true. Like some of those older movies are crazy. So are you talking just the animated or? Mm-hmm. Yep. We just watch animated Disney and Pixar within the Walt Disney studios and within Pixar studios. 
So um, not like a computer wore tennis shoes from my childhood. Or, no. Bed knobs and broomsticks? That was Disney, wasn't it? Bed uh, yeah, bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah. Which eventually we might do special episodes with, you know, the half animation, like Mary Poppins right, Mary and Poppins and Group and, Six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, we're, we're starting small and we're, we're starting with our plan and we've got a popcorn bucket full of um, all of the Disney movies. And we, every, at the end of every episode, we reach into the bucket and we pull out a movie and it's very exciting. And it's a Disney popcorn bucket, obviously. 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 Um, Absolutely. That's the other thing that I would say is that you picked a platform that has a a, um, big followership in and of itself. Like if you wanted to do a um, podcast on the Beatles, there'd be a big group of people who'd be already interested in that. Or if you wanted to do a podcast about, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of what else, but that already has a huge platform. If you wanted to do a podcast for writers. Right. That is a group. That's a big group of people who are going to at least go, oh, writers, I'm interested in that. Yeah. Um, If you wanted to do one about J.K. Rowling, even, that's Nietzsche or Nietzsche, but you probably, Mm -hmm. I mean, how many books did that person sell? I mean, there's a lot of backlash against her these days, but that being said, she still is a huge entity that you you can tag into, Mm -hmm. right? In the same way Disney is a huge entity. But also, I mean... So I think it's sort of like um, the idea of having not a web page for a book name, but a web page for an author name with the current book on the front page. It is understanding that you have to stand in that space and be yourself and be interested in what you're interested in and let people find you based on that, not based on, um, we'd like to hide behind the book or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> We'd like to still be that quiet little author who isn't a human and not, and we'd also like to, um, we'd like to think we don't have to be a personality to sell a book. You don't have to be a certain personality, like we both are very extroverted, et cetera. You don't have to be that, but you have to be who you are and, and, and play that on TV, you know, live yes. that out, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and that's that, something that's always been, you know, a concern for me as I've, as I've been, you know, working on novel writing. And for a while I was trying to work on a memoir and I was like, mm, I'm going to work on a novel. That sounds more fun to me. Uh-huh. Um, and, and knowing that I know that I, I, knowing that I need to have a platform and being able to build that platform in a way that feels authentic to me is the most important thing. And so if I'm not myself on the internet, on all of the social media, on the podcast, then I'm not doing that authentic friendship community, building of a community that I find to be the most important part. So which platform do you, are you referring to when you say, I know I need a platform, the Disney or the, but the you know, the platform that the podcast comes out on, or I'm not sure what I meant. Oh, social, like social media in general, like just being able to build, um, a, a platform of a social following. Yeah. I understand. I know we both sort of, you know, curl our lip at the word following or followership or whatever. And it's not, um, with this, this is, there just aren't other words for it. We don't have attractees or, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. and to use that word as if it means somehow last or somehow blind or some, you know what I mean? We're not either of us trying to imply that, but you do need, if you are a leader, you have followers. If yes. you are, you know, and those people are just people who like you and you might like them right back and be their follower just as readily. Right. I mean, I'm a fan of a million people, right. <laughs> <laughs> fan or follower. Right. But it's fan. hard to, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's hard to talk about it without feeling like a little icky. But um, but I, I think you need to get comfortable with those words and with the, that concept because it's a lot of what we base our lives on, our, our livelihoods in this case. Our livelihoods, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. being um, likable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. So how did you get, you talked about getting started. How did Mm -hmm. you figure it out? Just like even technically or. Yeah. So 
uh, we did, we did a little bit of research. We tried to find a place to host our pod after we picked the name, then it was okay. Now let's find a place to host it. We opted with Buzzsprout, um, because it is very intuitive. The price was right. It's a, Mm -hmm. it's pretty low cost for us because we are still publishing under three hours worth of episode a month. We try to keep our episodes really short. Oh, really? Um, How long? So we try to keep them under 25 minutes because um, we're, we're both moms, but, <laughs> but also, um, because I mean, we just try that to sympathy, that sympathy for <laughs> how much time you have in a day. But we we try to keep it, uh, for like the, a shorter commute. Not everybody has an hour long commute. A lot of people do, but our mm. goal was to kind of keep it in a, in a one shot where if you're commuting or if you've got, you know, a 25 minute, half an hour lunch break, something like that, where you can just listen and go wow that's so strategic i just thought "Mm, 40 minutes seems good to me (laughs) well a lot of of people are arriving at your office now we'll say everything interesting starting now (laughs) a lot of podcasts do do an hour or 40 minutes Mm -hmm. and some just go on for important just arrived at the office and left so now i can just say "Hmm, i like your hair it's not a real backdrop (laughs) nope because now we're just killing time. All the important people already left. <laughs> okay. So you wanted to do 20, 25 minutes. That's, mm-hmm. I, d- I just did my um, online course and I kept everything, even like 11 minutes sometimes yeah. just so that you could tuck it into your day and learn sort of one concept at a time, you know? Yep. And mm-hmm. I mean, as we go on, our episodes might get longer. The more, the, the more people who are like, we want more, we want more. Well, then we might do that. Right now we're, we're really content with our, our episode length. They're, they're snippy, they're fast. Um, How do you, so what do you, do you really um, set them up to be a certain thing before you get going? Like, no. do you know what you're, is it scripted? No, not at all. You, no, we, so we script our opening and we script our ending and mm-hmm. then everything else. Uh, we, we both have notes and we walk through the movie and sometimes we backtrack, um, mm-hmm. but we do fix agree that all. usually or don't agree? Uh, we usually agree in some, in some facets, there's like, you know, once it, once you start getting into like little tiny details, we might be like, well, I like this one better than this. And it's minutia. I will say, um, like anything you ever write or put out in the world, it is a worldview that you're presenting. It is your set of values against something that people understand or know so that they can go disagree, agree take that on, don't take that on. You know, it's a worldview mm-hmm. always. So if a novel is a worldview, if you're talking about somebody completely different from you, you're still presenting a worldview. Absolutely. Yeah, which is, I think, why writers are the best weirdos. I mean, literally, that is a core value for me because I do feel like we wouldn't feel compelled to write if there weren't something new to present that we Absolutely. felt was being underpresented. Yes, right? that's like uh, yeah. so true. Yeah. Um, both Sarah and I are, you know, we're professional writers and we're, we have this fun podcast that we both really love doing. And the, the cool thing about it is, yes, we're talking about Disney movies, but we are also bringing in our, you know, our childhood memories of the movie, but also seeing it now from an adult lens, from a feminist lens and looking at these movies with different eyes than we ever did before and like learning about the behind the scenes facts. And as we're presenting that, you know, we're, we're providing our, our worldviews on that and the opinions and like, wow, you, know, even, you just can't help it. You know what I mean? It's you're, true. There, you're there in your authentic self and you're just talking about what you're talking about, but it's always coming through your voice. This is why I think people don't get that they don't have to have all their marketing on a topic all, you know, your social marketing can definitely just be who you are and what you enjoy. And people will appreciate that because they love enjoying with you more mm-hmm. than they love tips or techniques or five ways to whatever, you know, <laughs> five ways to watch a movie <laughs> with your daughter. Um, you know, <laughs> they love just enjoying something with you. And that's why that's, I mean, that's a followership that you can again, where I, I was going to say bank on, but what I, I do mean that because it's just like, a friend whom you can rely on or, you know, like, you know, you can borrow your sister's car. That's not everybody. Right. But you can bank on that. Right. Right. Yep. I have to borrow my sister's car. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So anyway, it's, 
when you can enjoy with other people, some when you can when your marketing can be really enjoyable, your authentic self can show up, and it really makes an enormous difference in how you are perceived, appreciated, and followed. Right? Yes. Yes. Right. So I mean, I think, and tell me where I'm wrong, but every writer I've ever known, when they get to the part where they're supposed to market, nobody gets into writing for marketing. Oh, we can't wait to market my book. Right. <laughs> I was in um, marketing, copywriting and marketing content editing for years. Nobody wants mm-hmm. to do that. That's where, that's where writers souls go to die. <laughs> um, but so see, I'm going to disagree with you. I think writer's souls can go to die when they're doing that, particularly for some other brand, but oh, when yes. it's your personal brand, if you look at it, like you're the, you know, car warranty caller or you're the American express ad you've seen a thousand times or, and maybe object to or, oh my God, liberty, liberty, liberty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> always mute that one, always. <laughs> um, so if you think of yourself as that, of course you're going to be repelled. You know, you're going to be like, oh, mm-hmm. I can't do it. It's icky. I don't know why it shouldn't, I shouldn't have to do it either. There's always that little thing. Right. I, I, there's, I, I, I get a whole pass. That's how brilliant I am. But when you're <laughs> living your life authentically and you're showcasing your authentic self and person and branding that and marketing that is easy and it's more fun by a long Mm -hmm. shot for you and for your listeners for you and for your readers it's just i mean you're not um you're not really marketing as much but it is straight up marketing you know it has the effect of straight up marketing from the point of view of attracting instead of pushing that's the warranty car car warranty is definitely a push right it's always (laughs) in your face well, so and like I think, you, you think ahead. of like the little things that as a, as a person and, and as a person who is also a brand, um, a there, mm-hmm. there are little details that people look for and, and they start to recognize that. So a lot of times when people see a combination of pink and aqua, they think of me because I'm often wearing pink and aqua. My, oh, my blog colors, that. my blog colors are pink and aqua. Like that is my, that is part of my branding. And as, as wild as that is, that's just, I mean, there are colors that I very much enjoy. I wouldn't have dyed my hair hot pink if I, if I didn't feel that way. Every day, right? (laughs) Every single day. day. (laughs) I mean, I just got it touched up. That's how I I don't have any roots right now. I do. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think like 98% of women dye their hair at some point in their lives. Oh yeah. I mean, I've been doing it since I was 11. The podcast will be back in less than a minute. Hey, writers, are your creative juices running low? Are you skipping writing sessions because you're so busy or because you're just tired? Well, there's an easy fix. Really? Try Mighty Write. Mighty Write gets you writing and keeps you writing. Ingredients include creativity, writing, coaching, community, and Zoom sessions. Side effects may include productivity, finished work, bragging, and stupid grins. Try Mighty Write. Seriously, click on the link for more info about the Mighty Writers Club. Be mighty! The Mighty Writers Club. Find us at go.decodingcreativity.com slash mighty. So this idea of content and voice for its own sake and not for its helpfulness or its, is just, I think, a hard one to step into um, egotist, like ego-wise, like you mm-hmm. just feel vulnerable. It's more vulnerable. Um, yes. I mean, I think a lot of people would have a hard time wearing pink hair just for starters. That's a vulnerable position. You know, but then also then to talk to people with that hair, you know, (laughs) a lot of people, like I get a lot more people coming up to me and talking to me because I have pink hair than when I had blonde hair. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Yeah. Like it's, it's, um, I call it my armor because when I'm in a public setting, I am often too shy to walk up to people, which shocks the heck out of most people who talk to me. Hmm. I would um, never have thought of it as armor, but I can see where you're coming from. But when it's- I'm wearing my armor, people come up to me. I have a light up skirt. That's part of my armor. People are like, whoa, that's cool. 
hey, how's it going? Hi, new friend. <laughs> I wonder now, armor and brand seem to be opposites, and yet in this case, they really aren't. We have a person on the podcast, uh, Danielle Miller, talking about personal brand. And the idea being that you're putting out a brand whether you try or not. Mm-hmm. People are perceiving you and ticking up four things about you in their heads, whether you are trying to put those things in their heads or not. So you might as well kind of understand what you're putting in their heads and that's, work with that, right? That's awesome. Right. So, but now armor is seemingly the opposite of brand. Armor kind of keeps away, but what you're saying is it protects a space, right? Am I getting that right? Yeah. For me, it, it protects my headspace because if headspace. I'm, if I'm feeling nervous or anxious in a place and, and I am an extrovert. So like people, I love people. I love when people talk to me and I love being in a, a crowded room and full of people who want to hang out, mm-hmm. but I'm very anxious to like jump into a conversation or talk to someone. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm going to be awkward. I'm so weird. Awkward is such a weird, you know, somebody says awkward turtle when you say, when things get quiet, <laughs> awkward turtle. I don't remember where I heard that, but at any rate, um, awkward is weird, especially, I mean, my kids are always worried about being awkward. Whereas I think that's, that's almost generational for me. I feel like everything's freaking awkward, you know, because <laughs> we used to do business stuff. Oh, how are you? That's not awkward and fake. It is. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Damn glad to meet you. <laughs> lovely weather we're having around here now that's armor you know like there was a way of behaving that you didn't have to be yourself you could just be business guy you know (laughs) (laughs) yes i'm in charge of your business you know whatever you could just be Mm yeah i mostly just think of it as protecting me in a way that it makes me more comfortable i think that that's kind of what a brand is and and a lot of times people think a brand is exposure when in fact it's a way of um, keeping a space behind the, the brand that maybe, you know, your more vulnerable moments, your family moments, your, mm-hmm. how you feel about your whatever, you know, you know, you don't have to bring everything to your brand. Your brand doesn't have to be, yours is very broad it's, and it's pretty deep into your life. Mine's yes. less broad into my life, but um, like people, I don't even, sometimes people say, are you married? <laughs> isn't that terrible love them to pieces really good marriage <laughs> that's awesome and and for me like I I like to talk about my marriage because I love my marriage I love my husband me too and, it just doesn't and, well, no, and, it doesn't factor in yeah and, and it's it's been a part of like my blog when I started my blog in 2012 wow um, yeah it's, it's you, been did a you long have to time do letter you had to set letters at those days or just type? Well, it was just typing. It was just typing. Okay. <laughs> um, but when I started my blog, originally, I was just going to tell like all of these old stories about my life that I just was like remembering things and, you know, kind of personal essay esque. And one morning I woke up and I was like, and I was publishing every day, five days a week, Monday wow. through Friday. Mm hmm. And I woke up and I was like, well, that's shoot, how I had... blogging was in those days, I think. Yeah, it was wild. Mm-hmm. And I woke mm-hmm. up one morning and I would do this all before I went to work. Like I'd wake up, boop, 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 whip something out and then go to work. Wow. It was, it was wild times, man. It was wild times. Yeah. Um, and I woke up and I was like, I have nothing, I have nothing in my docket. I don't have a, a thing I wanted to talk about. I don't have anything prepped and ready to just push. What am I? All right, well, let's talk about, you know, the the bug in our house I don't remember exactly which story kicked it all off but I was like all right well let's talk about this and started talking about my husband and you know and people like really it really resonated with people and I was like oh all right well I guess I will talk about my current life too Mm -hmm, this is fun mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it just kind of went off from there and anything that I publish about my husband he has he has full veto right on he sees it before it goes live and he can say "Mm -mm." big no. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it, I, it's just, it's just interesting. For, it's just a difference. I, I, I have a, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. Uh, he's, he's a man and we've, we've been very close. We've had masterminds for years and things of that nature. And um, I just said out of the blue, isn't it great to have a great marriage? 
because I'm his wife is great too. <laughs> it's like it is so nice that it, that you don't have to worry about that. That that's not on your radar at all. That she she meets me doesn't have even a second thought, nor should she. You know right. about right, but in lesser marriages or different situations, somebody would or could, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just, anyway, but we're way off the topic of podcasting. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> that's me. That's my, that's my fatal flaw. That's your brand. <laughs> that's my brand. Well, we don't have to discuss that now. <laughs> no. <laughs> So anyway, okay. So you picked a topic, Podcasting. you picked a platform and you've got the schedule together. How much editing do you do? Do you like I, put down the 20 minutes and it's done? Or do you put down four hours and choose 20 minutes? Yes. Oh um, my. So mm-hmm. we, we do a lot of editing in the very beginning. So we have like an entire, like hidden untold season mm-hmm. that we, so when we first started, I, like I said, it took us so long to go live we recorded an entire first season wow and killed it like just scrapped it completely do you think it was because you were learning how to podcast and you yes. don't like it as much uh-huh yeah we no, were have, we I were that novel i have that we novel were, in the drawer it yeah we were learning right we were yeah. learning we were figuring it out we were trying to see what we wanted to do how we did it so our first episode was bambi mm-hmm. and we recorded bambi four times Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until the fourth time that it was like this is it this is the episode we want it to be and then we can um we continued recording and by the time I had finished editing Bambi we had six episodes in the can because you talked that long well, no, we had, we had six separate, like we had oh, like other it, movies, uh-huh. other movies. So we had been recording and not editing them all. And we were just going to edit in bulk. We yeah. didn't, okay. we, we decided that that didn't work for us because they were just piling up and yeah. we had these like three hour episodes that needed to be cut down to 20 minutes. And I'm just a top and tail. I'm always been a top and tail editor, you know, just take off the, the, where's that button weird moment and you mm-hmm. know if you like but I I don't know it feels like people have asked me to what do you want me to send you right uh questions and lightly scripted answers I'm like god no <laughs> um you know to me it's just a conversation and somebody has something to share which is useful to to a writer who would like to do a podcast mm-hmm. but ultimately it's just a it's just a visit with someone that you know yeah. So, so you did that much editing and then you had, yeah. then you had just hours of footage. You just do audio or you do audio video? Um, we record the whole thing, but we just do audio right now. I think eventually we'll, we'll publish the videos to YouTube because mm-hmm. we have them. We just right. haven't gotten, we haven't started on that yet. Are they harder to edit? The videos? Yeah. Oh yeah. We have, oh God. Yeah. I don't know if we'll ever do this. <laughs> See, I think a lot of people, that's one of the reasons they don't, because it's almost, especially a Zoom video, very mm-hmm. hard to edit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's- I think if we ended up doing like, vi- if publishing video on YouTube, it would just be audio with like a, a visual, like, here's our logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could take, you could take occasional stills, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah weird face stills That's weird face stills <laughs> I, I for some reason i never have a good face on those thumbnails it's always just like oh same you know, man every time me. yeah i don't know it's because my um, face but yeah so fun. we we do do uh a fair amount of editing and sarah will be the first to tell you that she hates editing because she she doesn't want to cut anything and ah, i i'm just i go figure. in there I go in there and I'm like, snip, snip, snip. This sounds terrible. I don't care if it's really funny. Get it out of here. I'm a, I'm a kill your darlings and cut the crap. And you're probably well paired because she sounds divergent. You sound convergent, you know, by nature. Mm-hmm. You're probably well paired. Mm-hmm. Um, in olden days, I used to edit things and I could, I, I know what the audio 
wave looks like when someone's saying, um, I don't even have to listen. I could just go right to it and cut it because it looks like um, like a bear with a belly. The, uh -huh. the audio look of, of the word. I've um. probably said 17,000 ums in the last but 10 It minutes. is hard to get it out of your out of your usage. You know, and it's not, it, if you've got somebody speaking, even on TV and they're just live and they're saying um a lot, you just, it's just like, it's just like no does. You know, you really feel like, yeah, uh, or more like the opposite of no does. What would that be? Go does. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's even a politician who's talking or somebody really important. If they're saying um every other minute, you're just losing, you know, you're losing it. You're losing your audience. Definitely. So I got to where I could find those ums just graphically how they look in the sound waves and cut them, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> but I, like I said, I think at this point, I'm trying to just do this as straight up as I can because it makes it possible. And it, and it makes it, it, you get the, the listener gets all of the, the nitty gritty and the details and they get to know the guests as well as you do. But if I didn't have, if I couldn't do that confidently, which a lot of people can't, they've got to perfect it or whatever. If I couldn't do that confidently, I couldn't really do a podcast. I don't have the time to do it. I used to do a podcast a week for a professional network. And mm -hmm. even that, and they did all the editing, right? And distribution and everything. But even that, just coming up with guests, et cetera, et cetera, it was still probably 12 hours a week, you yeah. know? And that's, that's a lot to dedicate to what is basically social media marketing, mm -hmm. except, except something you enjoy. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. All right. So anything else you'd want to tell people is if they were contemplating a podcast, what they should take into account? So I want to say that I think a microphone is probably the most important thing to have. Okay. The, the microphone on your computer, laptop, phone, whatever you're recording on is okay. Mm -hmm. But spending 30 to $50 on a good microphone is probably like the best investment you can make if you're going to start having, like snowball. start doing I a podcast. A yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And bad audio is very hard to listen to. We don't recognize that we're snobs about audio because we have such good audio in our lives, you know, like everything's so produced. But as soon as something's underproduced, you just go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're we're used to good audio. So yeah, I have a snowball microphone. And then for anyone who wants to do serious editing on their podcast, I really highly recommend Descript. I would go so Descript. far. I would go okay. so far as to say Descript is everything. I've used Audition, which is um, part mm -hmm. of the Adobe services. Yeah, I tried Audacity, which is free, and I found it to be I hated audacity. I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know how they got like a knife through the computer and into my eye, but that's what it felt like. <laughs> yes, it's, it was so tedious and oh, I get and, that it was free, but man. But do you have to make it harmful just because it's free? So audacity it was, was terrible from my point It was excessive. Yeah. And audition like, is a much more intuitive. It's much more like auditing, you know, editing, mm -hmm. um, type you know you can and just... that's that's how I feel about Descript they automatic it automatically creates transcripts which you still need to edit because you can't right. tell exactly like it doesn't always know that when I say a word it means that word so you just right. still, you still need to go in and and mm -hmm. edit it but it's an automatic transcript that shows up in your editing when you're doing it you can record in Descript or out of Descript and upload it okay. makes it really easy to cut, paste, move, add, delete, re-add. So if you delete something, you delete too much, you can undo your delete. Um, there are some like- Is that D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T? What is that? Descript. Yep. Mm -hmm. Descript, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. It's it's just, it's a really, it's a really great program, a really good bang for your buck. I'm using husband, it's free. <laughs> We, we both paid for the Descript or no, we paid for one Descript, but we can use it on both of our computers. Mm, so we can good. simultaneously access it. Oh, so you can actually discuss things and go, yes, cut. And then go on if you mm -hmm. wanted to. I think, right? I don't know if we've ever done I'm it. I'm pretty sure my husband time. uses Audition because he has the Adobe suite. Mm -hmm. So, and that's pretty intuitive, but it sounds like Descript, it doesn't kick out of transcript, which is great because if only because then you can search. When do we talk about X? 
Yes. Who was it I was and, talking to and about? And you can one. find those spots mm-hmm. by searching the transcript. The transcripts are used very useful in that way. Like if mm-hmm. somebody said, oh, we were talking about brand. When was that? You know, I yeah. can say, oh, it's in these three episodes or whatever. Yeah, easily. Right and, and it's really, it makes it so easy to like, if I want to cut a section from, you know, an hour in and put it at the, at the two minute mark, because, oh, we forgot to talk about the opening song. Okay. <laughs> let's go. Let's just talk about it. And then, and we'll, then just we'll move it, it right back in there. <laughs> a whole new world. Um, so, <laughs> all right. All right. Well, and you find it to be fun. What yes. about co-host versus guest? Why, why do one, why do the other? We, uh, I think we are a really great match as co-hosts. I think that if you can find a co-host who balances you in a good way. So I am rainbows and bright and shiny and I love everything. Yay, yay, yay. And Sarah is the dark and twisty and this is terrible. I can't believe we watched this. And mm-hmm. and we both love Disney and we both love Disney movies and she has her favorites, but she's going to, you know, curse me out when I tell her that no, Bolt was not that bad. Um, oh, and she's like, yeah. it's the worst movie ever. It's an assault on your ears. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Somebody who balances you out. Now I've heard people who just read their blog as a podcast. What do you think of that idea? I've thought about doing that on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And do you think you would act it out or you would, what would you, a TikTok's visual, you'd have to. I mean, I would just verbally tell my, like, tell the story. I wouldn't read it word for word. I would tell that story in Mm -hmm. a shorter format way and I talk really fast so it probably would work out just fine in in terms of time yeah Mm -hmm. um but I I think I was amazed how many people have that take on uh, you know like when you're trying to be a guest on various podcasts like if you have a book out I was amazed how many people just go it's just me I read my blog and I'm just like oh okay back away slowly you know (laughs) But that is a very easy way to quote unquote have a podcast. It's true. And and you think about the number of people who don't have time to sit down and read, but they have time to listen. Or more to the point they prefer listening. Or yeah, I mean, I was always, I would rather read something than watch a video, read something than listen to the audiobook, read something than, you know, listen to the podcast. And then I got pregnant and I couldn't use my hands because my carpal tunnel just went absolutely oh. insane. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't hold a book. Like I really, it was the weirdest thing. I couldn't hold a book. Wow. And mm-hmm. so I started listening to audiobooks, and I had been listening to podcasts because I was commuting downtown a lot mm-hmm. and it was a, it was just an easy way, but I was like, well, if I am, if I can't read a book, I need to be able to read a book. So I started listening to audiobooks and I can't tell you how many, how much time I've spent listening to audiobooks and podcasts having, you know, been pregnant and then having a baby and just, I'm holding a baby and I'm stuck right. in baby jail for, yeah, and you're just doing, you know, who knows room, how room long the car or whatever. So it's nice to mm-hmm. have something. Mm-hmm. And they so even... listening is a great way and having a podcast about, you know, your blog or reading your blog, as long as you're a dynamic reader. I was, yeah, I mean, you know, I've portrayed this as bad, but it could be done well. Anyway, well, I appreciate that you put yourself out in the world and talk about things you love and expect that to bring the people who will love you to you. I think that's a bold and vulnerable move, thank believe you. it or not. I really thank do. You. Oh, you're more than welcome. Well, so um, thank you for being with me, with us and, and just getting into some of the nitty gritty of podcasting. Thank you so much for having me on. It was great chatting with you. It was great chatting with you. Hey, thanks for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe and tell your friends. What did you learn today? What was your takeaway? What are you going to do today? Put it in the comments. We all want to know. Meanwhile, get my book, Write Without the Fight. You want to master your creative process so you can write with more ease and satisfaction. The links are all in the description box. Join us. Because writers are the best weirdos.